this I, is, hey it's been a, it's been a week man yeah it really yeah. has are we on right now yeah oh, we we're, okay, on. Cool. we're on no oh, it has goodness i haven't seen y'all in days for one I thought I had the COVID. <laughs> I was at home nervous. I was like, hold on. <laughs> I said, all right, I got a headache. All right, that's nothing. Like, let's take some aspirin. I yeah. said, oh, I'm fatigued. I said, wait a minute, let me look up these COVID symptoms. I said, uh-oh, I got some body aches. And then, you know, I had had some toilet issues. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. So then that's I'm when I nervous. text Rach. And I was like, yo, uh, just to be safe. So I went and got that test. The first time, I, this is my second time being tested. The first time I got tested, it was a rapid test. But I heard so many things like, oh, they're not reliable. Da, 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 da. So this time I waited it out. And then, I, of course, I don't have it. So I came right back. Mm. So it's good to see you guys, like, being isolated at the house. Likewise. Like, I yeah. look forward to these sessions. Yeah. yeah. We call them sessions, but, you know. They're kind of therapeutic. They, are. they really are. Yeah, you yeah. get to sit down and chat with your brothers and go from there, chat with all of our viewers, and and, and get get things rolling. No, it really is. I don't know. It's Everybody's so busy. I know we have our own, like, you know, lives outside of these mm -hmm. doors, mm -hmm. you know, other than just F45 as coaches or whatnot. You know, everybody has their own other thing they're doing. And mm -hmm. a lot of times we don't get a chance to speak or talk. What's right. on our mind. It's good that Emotions, you... Emotions... You can you set know? that time aside with yeah. a couple of people that you trust yeah. and that you want to speak with to be able to have that connection and be able to do these things. Right. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. It's nice to have these sessions. Yeah. All right, guys. Episode five. Welcome in. It's time to speak the fuck up. All right. Oh, I said that one kind of, kind of, <laughs> kind of, hey, Correct. let's speak the fuck up. All right. We're here today. We got a lot going on in the world. I'm, I'm here. It's Joe here with my man Pete and my man Griff. Episode five live. We're happy to be here with you all. Thank you guys for tuning in on the YouTube, following us on the Instagram. We'll plug all of that at the end of the show as well. We really, truly, you, we stress it. We can't stress it enough how much we appreciate you all for tuning in with us. Trust us. Trust us with an hour of your time, yeah. 45 minutes to an hour of your time. Like, we really appreciate that. And there's been so much engagement with the last one, too. Yeah. Um, so, again, we really do appreciate that. All the feedbacks, even just the, the comments, the lighthearted joking ones the the ones that are serious the yeah. ones that can relate the one that can't relate i mean just it's, it's just all of it absolutely and shout out to sonia let's give her another shout out shout out to sonia you really did your thing for us we really appreciate you catch her at sonia azad tv over on instagram you can catch her in episode four you can go follow her over there on her social media tags gentlemen Woo. busy week stressful week Pete, I saw, man, yesterday I saw you, it hurt my face. It hurt my, my hurt my face. Hurt I saw face. your face and it hurt my heart, man. You you recently suffered a loss. I appreciate you. And it's, it's a pet. Yeah. For those that, that are wondering, it's, you know, well, but still, it's family. Yeah, right? yeah. It really is. I, you know, there, there was a girl in high school and she was crying in the hallway and I was like, hey, what, what's wrong? And she was like, my my dog died. And I said, well, just buy another one. Yeah. And because I grew up Section 8 housing, no pets allowed. Right. And it wasn't until later on in life that I realized, like, these pe people have pets for 14, 15, 20 years. Yeah. So it's, you know, that that's an attachment. It becomes that's family. An attachment. Yeah. yeah. Especially when you see them day in, day out. Every day. Every day. You watch them grow. Mm -hmm. They they run to you. Yeah. They're like They're like kids. They're like kids. Yeah. They're like kids. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm sorry for your loss, for real, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. I, I saw you yesterday and just the pain that I saw. And I was like, oh, and I had to go. But I was yeah. like, damn, damn, I would have stayed there and talked to you, man. No, it's all good. No worries. I appreciate you, though. No, it's it's one of those things where some people are like, man, it was just a dog, you know. And for those that don't understand and for those that do, you know, it's like, it's not just a dog. It's mm -hmm. really is family. Yeah. You know, it's kind of those. I was just kind of out of it yesterday. I was just working out just to, you know clear my head yeah just kind of not necessarily just go through the movements but you know yeah keep your yeah. mind busy a little yeah. bit yeah kind of not think about it i don't know it's just one of those things where uh for those that are, have dogs or pets you know they're like right. you don't think of it just as unconditional love man it's like unconditional loyalty mm -hmm. in, in a sense you do you, you, you can do them wrong forget to feed them forget giving water leave them at home for hours and you come home and they're just like excited to see you just want to chill next to you they, they can actually sense your emotions kind of mm -hmm. thing where you're you're excited and happy they'll bounce around with you and if it's one of those things where you just want to sit there quiet they'll chill. sit there quiet with you yeah, yeah. how but long yeah, how long was you. your pet in your life since 2010 okay so 10 years yeah oh. yeah yeah That's i never cute. owned a four-leg pet but i had a Boa constrictor when I was, Ooh. I don't remember what age I was. I was young yeah. at my dad's house. Yeah. And I watched it grow, you know, and got too big to where we had to give it away. Right. You know what I mean? But my girl had a pet, 
or she had a dog, whatever. And Murphy, he was the coolest dog ever. Dude. Yeah. Like, um, and I got attached to him. And then when he passed away, I was like, damn, it's kind of, this sucks. It's rough. Yeah. Then I didn't understand because at yeah. first I'm like, just get another. Right. That's how mm-hmm. I was. Yeah. yeah, that's how I was. Mm-hmm. But I got attached to that damn dog, man. You, you know, do. They become that's, family. That's crazy. They yeah. do. Outside of that, gentlemen, how are we doing? It's it's been a hell of a week. It has been. We, a hell of a we week. we're watching God. we're watching school get back in order. We have elections Ooh. coming up. We're seeing the Democratic nominees. Vote. I'm seeing all my Trump supporters. I'm seeing my Biden supporters. I'm seeing yeah. the people on the outside saying, "Ah, you all are clowns." Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I'm seeing my maskers, my anti-maskers. My Facebook is blowing up. I'm reading all of this shit. My mental health is shaking and. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been a draining year. What the hell it's is going been, on? It's still going, baby. Draining. It's still going. Yeah, yeah. Till maybe after November. Who <laughs> knows? No, no not even. It's going to continue into twenty twenty one. We're either on the Biden train or the Trump chain. They're either going to have the schools open or all the yeah. kids are going to be back at home. The flu mm-hmm. season is about to start, so COVID is on about to have a friend. COVID. Oh, God. Where do you gentlemen want to start? <laughs> I want to start with <laughs> traffic. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> What about traffic, Griff? Fuck traffic, right? Mm-hmm. People in Dallas. Dallas. Oh, let, let me address. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Hey, people. tune in. Learn how to merge. Oh, I got oh, cut off on the way over oh, here. Merge. No right? Blinker. It should look like a zipper. Yeah. There are synchronized stunt drivers, right? <laughs> they know how to merge at 70, 80 miles an hour. Merge. If you're getting on the freeway, the speed limit is going to be, what, 60, 65, 70, yeah. somewhere in there. Don't get on the freeway at 20 miles an hour thinking you're about to merge. What? <laughs> Come on, preach. Let it go, Griff. Come on. Let it out. Mm, Let it out, man. Speak merge. Fuck up, dude. <laughs> Just like that. It's that simple. I understand. It really is. I don't know where the disc. I don't know. I, they should maybe restructure the driving permit class learning fucking something merge take parallel parking out of learn it and learn it. how to merge go youtube how to merge or youtube stunt drivers merge or you just youtube merge you know the, just merge the worst ones are those drivers with those little hondas i swear if, if every honda i run into driving on the highway they are just in and out zipping into traffic and i associate all honda drivers with bad driving <laughs> In Dallas Fort Worth. If you have your little four cylinder car, your little 2.0 turbo, you be zipping in and out. All right? Sir. Chill out. Why are you talking about my I, cousins like that? No! <laughs> oh, man. The rice burners, baby. Oh. Can you leave my family out of this? Oh. oh, shit. I don't drive a Hyundai, by the way. I don't. Oh. <laughs> Those are the worst ones. I, I share your sentiments in that. Oh, I share man. your sentiments in that. Blinkers don't mean speed up and not let oh, them in. God, that, yes, it does it, for it, me. Well, unless unless you're speeding up to go past them and then let them behind you. But some people speed up and then stay next to. You. I it's hate just it. Like, just like I, I hate it when you're like when you you've merged in from far back and then someone just pulls all the way up and they're thinking they're skipping in front of you. Right. Not me. Not right. me. I will not let you in. I waited. You should have gotten right. the back it's like and you got your ass in, your ass in the, the ass in the back. <laughs> get your ass in the back. We learned this in elementary school. Don't skip the line. Don't skip the get line. The I don't know. I learned Chinese cutback. The fuck is a Wait. Chinese cutback? Where you, you cut in front of them and they let you cut back? Like, it's like on reserve? Like, hey, I let you cut last time. Now you got to let me cut? No, it's just one of those things where like, hey, will you let me cut in front of you? And then I'll let you cut right back in front of me. So then I'll just oh, right wow. Y'all really played the system Damn. on that one. Was it just an Asian thing? I I, I don't think I did Chinese cut back. Oh, no, no, or it's called Chinese like cuts. I don't know something Ooh. like that. Yeah. I'm not Chinese either, by the way. So <laughs> 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 I don't drive a Hyundai. Or- <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify, just to, just to clarify some shit. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. You want to start in politics? Yeah, yeah since race seems to be a factor. Do we have to? Do we have to add a disclaimer that we're not a? Uh, how do you guys feel about politics? Let's Man. let's start right there. I honestly hate politics. I hate politics too. I hate it with a Whether it's an election year or not, I, I feel like I feel like politics divides. Yeah. Every like this causes it, more it's, harm than good. Man. Yeah, especially right. especially this year. Yeah. With <laughs> at first it was like we're in this together, and all of a sudden it's oh well you wear a mask you're a sheep well you mm-hmm. don't wear a mask you don't give a fuck and mm-hmm. you know and next thing you know it's like oh, okay well it's conspiracy theories and. Ooh, 
Then we're talking about tough. school, and it's like, all right, you want forced children's back into school, but offices are still closed because they're having meetings at home because it's not safe. And it's like, well, we can't regulate these kids wearing masks. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, but you can regulate their dress code, and, mm. right? And all this other shit. Like, mm. you can't have colored hair, and your, right. your skirts have to be but this certain inch, but you can't, you can't, you know, wow. man, like. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to that too. Wow, now, man. all right. So, politics. Are you guys voters? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I'm. You have I'm, to. Yeah, it's man. it's your given right. It's like it, it's a voice. It is. It really is. I, I went for a while thinking like my vote doesn't matter. Doesn't yeah, same. Matter. I'll be honest. I I grew up like the moment I turned eighteen and you know you can register to vote. I didn't because I was like, man, my vote don't count. Right. You know, Nobody it don't matter. Who was on the ballot when you were eighteen? Who? I don't remember. What year was it? Uh, let, me, let me do some math real quick. Damn. I'm Asian. I'm supposed to do this in my head real quick. I was 19? Yeah, 19. So what year What year was that? <laughs> Fuck, dude. I mean, okay, so I graduated in 01. I was 18. So 2002. So Bush and whoever he ran against on the, in his second term. Who did Bush run against in the second term? I don't term? even fucking remember Because I think that he was he was in office starting the year 2000. Yeah, because 2001 was when, unfortunate, you know, our condolences to September 11th. So then yeah. your first one would have right. been Bush, and I, I don't know who he ran against that second time around. What, what about Al you? Al Gore. Was it Al Gore? I think Al Gore was the first, first. run. So it was I Bush, so. Al Gore, because I, I think I was like 10, and then I remember just hearing the people in my community, the Republicans, da, da, da. I've always been brought up that Republicans are evil. You don't yeah. vote Republican yeah. because you're black, you vote. Democrat. You vote Democrat. Same right. Way. Yeah. You vote Democrat. And so when I turned 18, the first person, it was Barack Obama. And I voted based off of universal health care because at the time my mother didn't have health care. Right. And she had broken her ankle. She had just moved to Texas. So I voted Democrat based off of that. Now I'm I'm gonna go out and say I don't I don't vote. I'm not registered to vote. I'm not. Um this last time around when they gave me who who they give me Trump and Hillary Clinton? Yeah, you totally ignored. I feel like there's like I've said this before. You ignored a whole middle party. I have some views that line up with Republicans. I have some views that line up with Democrats. I have some views that line up with the Independent Party. I feel like so, that's how it is nowadays. Yeah, but I can't. But it's like I can't bring I myself to vote for the lesser of two evils, which yeah. I feel like is the commonplace practice in politics right now. Mm-hmm. Is choose choose between the lesser of two evils. Yeah. And then if you talk about it, you're saying, oh, well, you don't vote. You don't have a voice. Right. Well, that, that's cool. I don't, com- I don't complain about it. I just continue to go along about my shit and do what I can do to control in my life. Right. So, so it's like, I don't, I don't like either of them. You're going to force me to choose the lesser. And that's single. complete shit. Yeah. yeah. That's complete shit. I don't, I don't know. This is just some crazy thought that I've had in my head. I always felt like the president and the vice president should be split between the two parties. If there's a Republican president, there should be a Democratic right. vice, vice president. president. There should always be some counterbalance to it. Right. Like there, it, it makes no sense if you, you know, send it. I don't I don't know everything behind it. Split it 50 50 regardless across who controls that. No, 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 no. It should not be controlled by one complete party. Do it you feel do you, do you feel like the power is in the people or no? Um, the power is in the people to an extent. Yeah. I always say that. Well, you, you guys don't have rockets and tanks like mm-hmm. you don't you have power. You, but you don't have that much power. Like, you know, now they say like, you know, you know, we get deep off into it that they won't, you know, do certain things. But if it gets down to it, I believe that it could happen. So yeah, they got the power to do it. Yeah. Yeah. The people are the fourth court. You're the fourth court. Mm -hmm. Like you, but I feel like our nation is so we're all entangled in our own lives that it won't be anything like that. We'll see right. the things on the news. And then you have the people that are like me, like, hey, it's Monday. I'm going to work. I'm getting but my see, stuff it's one of those things where I, I keep talking about it amongst each other or amongst ourselves and amongst class. And it's like we, we're all we have in the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, look after your neighbors and then proceed on to your community and you continue to look out for each other. Because the people of power don't give a fuck, no. right? So in we've my been opinion. so we've been paying attention. You guys been seeing stuff on the news. Yeah, um, we got some history going on. Um, Kamala Harris, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, African American. She's got Indian heritage. Mm-hmm. In, Indian as far as India, Jamaica, um, right? Jamaican. She's Jamaican. Is it Jamaican? Kamala, Jamaican. I don't. Let me. I don't know. I, I'm, I could be wrong. I thought, I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure I'm wrong. Need a fact. Yeah, that's all we need. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Google search, but sure. we've got that history pretty going sure on. Wrong. How do you, how does that how do you gentlemen feel about that? A woman, um, biracial woman, how, does that in any way do you think that influences people's votes? 
Definitely does. They vote just strictly off just of race. because it's a woman, it's a black woman, whatever. I had an argument with my, not an argument, but a discussion with my dad. A debate. And he's all about Democrat, Democrat. I'm like, dude, mm-hmm. don't just vote straight ticket. Right. Yeah. Like, look at each individual person you voting for mm-hmm. and make a decision. Don't just be like, oh, fuck those Republicans. Democrat. Yeah, all the way down. Just that, That's, you're not going to be heard. That's, that's, that's where we mess up at. You know what I'm saying? It's not just about voting for the president, vice president. It starts with the local, you know, and state and all that stuff. You got to start from the bottom and keep, you know, just keep going. Don't just wait for, you know, every four years you go vote for your, the president, vice president, whatever. Right. You, know, you need to be doing that. You need to I, stay consistent on it and don't do the straight ticket. That's what, that's, that's the argument I've been having with a lot of people. I like, feel like, I feel like the majority of us don't take the time to do research. Right. I think we take what the media shows us for what the media shows us without taking it with a grain of salt. And that's the problem. Um, and that's the issue. <laughs> and you know? You know, that's why it's the power of media. It's like, I mean, we have friends that work in media. I mean, Sonya works in media. Mm-hmm. And so it's nothing against individuals per se. It's just how it's portrayed. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and, and it's. We don't research beyond the, the commercials and right. what we see. Yeah. We take it at face value and we're like, oh, that's this, this and this and that. Like I went and looked up Kamala because a lot of the things behind her were how she did California, California prisons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Joe Biden with his crime bill that they mm-hmm. signed back in 93, which was under the Democratic Party with, um, I think, Bill Clinton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That we saw mass incarceration go yeah. up. This is mm-hmm. all under the Democratic ticket. But being black. Let me just speak the fuck up for a second. You're looked at crazy if you if you say you're a Republican, yeah. especially if you're a black Republican right now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy that called the black NFL players mothers bitches. And yeah, you like you look Get at off the it. Field and, and, yeah, rightfully yeah. so. You look at it and you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, how could you? How can you go that way? But I feel like it's unfair to be pigeonholed into one frame of thought because of your, your phenotype. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's crazy from right there. It's crazy. We got, you know, it's in, like you said, it's ingrained in everything. So I take it you gentlemen will be voting this year. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like, so on the topic of politics, I feel like politics involved, whether it's an election year or not, takes away from subject matters that actually matter. Mm. Like for instance, the Save the Children civil rights movement, mask or no mask, you know, the whole COVID thing and handling of a pandemic. And it's like, okay, why do we have to throw politics into it? And at what point, if you go one way or the other, it's like, well, now you're completely against me. And it's like, no, it's, yeah. it's like left or right, literally left or right. And it's, it's dumb. It's fucking stupid in my opinion, you know? And it's like, you throw these hashtags around and I'm going to talk about like pedophilia right now. It's the whole thing. The, it went from Black Lives Matter to Save the Children, and now people are just hashtagging, throwing that hashtag and taking away from the actual, from, from businesses and individuals that have been doing this, mm-hmm. maybe like even put their whole life's work into it. And now it's like, okay, all of a sudden this came up and now it's a trend and throw politics into it. And it's like, what the social, fuck? Yeah, social media influence. You see what trends and you go with it. Yep, that's where everything is. And it's not a new issue. You know, you don't look into the facts. Like I said, we don't do the research into it. And I saw an article, a, a pretty, it was, you know, like I said, well, man, articles are written by media too, but you go and look into the source and actually you read the actual article and you read for, you know, the actual value of it. And it's like the whole wording of things becomes such an important play because words and, and how it's interpreted can make a, a difference. Mm-hmm. And how someone views something mm-hmm. or certain things. And it's like, you just say a certain amount of children go missing every day or go missing every year or whatnot. And it's like, they don't, they don't account for how many of those children are found mm. and whatnot. And then taking away, again, taking away from the actual subject matter itself because you want to throw politics into it, you know? And it's like, what are we doing? And then the whole Netflix movie that came out yesterday. That cheerleading movie uh, or cute, dance movie? Cuties or whatever, yeah, or just, whatever it's called. I see it on my social media. I haven't um, listened to it, but I saw I saw like stories on posted on social media or whatnot. But so basically the I if I could pull it up I would. It was it's a it's a dance, I guess, series about eleven year olds. And one of the captions was eleven year olds start finding herself through twerking or and things like that. And people are like, why are you, you know, why is this 
content even, out yeah, here, why is it on there? With, the, with like you said, like you touched on pedophilia, because I've been seeing a lot of like pedophilia things going on. Of course, you know, we had the Epstein stuff yeah. and doing things like that. I won't speak on that because people start disappearing. And I, I ain't trying to be one of those people. But the it's human just trafficking is a thing. It is a thing. Yeah, it's real. And they, they were talking about why, why is Netflix promoting the show? Why, why are things like that being shown? You know, yeah. wow. um, and then like the, so it has 11 year olds in it, but the, the age grouping said for 16 plus, <laughs> why are you telling what? 16 year olds to watch 11 year olds or saying like, this is where it starts at. But I, so there's a, you know, there's a lot of mess going on out here. No, we live in a fucked up world. We do. We do. We always have. It's just yeah. now stuff is. It just coming to light show yeah. is shown to us every Everywhere. single day yeah. like hey this has been going on for years but now we're, we see it every single day like it's a certain single day. like it's an agenda yeah. you know and then at what point are we just gonna are we just gonna completely forget about it and not even do anything about it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and it's like stop making it a trend folks it's not a trend it's an actual subject matter yeah. that we should do something or we need to do something about it. And there's so many different ways to do it and not necessarily just throwing a hashtag up there. You, anyone can throw a hashtag up. Anyone can throw a black square on your screen and, or, or do a black and white photo. But what are you doing behind closed doors after that? Are you actually signing petitions? Are you donating to certain organizations if you have the financial means for it? You know, are you being active in your community when they get together? Or, you know, what, like what are you doing, yeah. you know? It's like anyone can show something, anyone can flex on the screen, but what are you doing behind closed doors? You know, and it's like you don't necessarily have to be recording yourself doing these right. things. It's like at that point, are you doing it because you want to show people you're doing it or yeah. because you actually have real intentions behind it? You know? Right. Mm -hmm. That's where it gets lost at in my opinion. Man, like I don't people know. like I going sure for days got, about that. Make sure we got the video. Make sure we got the camera rolling. Oh, you, yeah. you got that? You, did you guess that? You right. Know, we get too caught up in trying to make appearances. Right. Versus just Doing it, doing it for the gram and not actually you know doing it. Right. Yeah. Woo. yeah. Speaking of children, how do you feel about them going back to school for those that aren't doing virtual classes? Mm. Are yeah. What are you, what are your are your children back so in or are they doing virtual? They're doing virtual right now. Right. And they're gonna do that until I want to say mid September. Mm -hmm. Then they'll be going back into the classroom. Yeah. But if I'm, I don't know if I'm completely right on this, but I think what they're gonna do is. Each grade will stay in the same classroom, and they'll have two teachers. Oh, just rotate? Rotate, right. Okay. So they're staying in the same classroom. Doing Everything is in that classroom. Lunch, yeah. uh, lessons, whatever they do is going to be in that classroom. Right. I don't think they're going to have, like, uh, PE or recess or anything like that, but, like, everything's going to happen in the classroom. They have to wear masks. Um, and we just bought, like, a shit ton of masks so they can have – so they don't have to put the same mask on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so it's... it's. I, th I think my ex-wife is more nervous about it than I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because she's there at the school. So, uh, and she's a nurse at the school or whatever. So she, she's like right there on the front line in the thick of it. So I'm not... I don't think I'm as concerned as she may be. Yeah. But I'm like, hey, they need to be in an environment with other kids like mm -hmm. i'm i don't know if there's a way to do that safely or whatever but i just know common sense right you they need to be with other kids right you know if, if it's any if it's a particular population that i feel the i feel like bad for the most would be the children mm -hmm. and, and there's so much that we can we as adults can learn from kids if we pay attention they they there's certain factors that come into it. Maybe they don't fully understand or right. grasp what's going on. Even the ones that do grasp and understand what's going on, they don't question it. They mm -hmm. don't throw politics into it. Yeah. They just understand well, this is something that needs to do. Yeah. And it's like I was watching a video about two children playing. And they're like, well, I'll wear a mask. Like, oh, well, we, we, we got to go grab our masks so we can play together or, you know, and whatnot. And I think the parent was like, well, why do you need to get your mask? It's like, so I can protect her. It's not, it's, they literally said, again, whether it was – Coach or not, but it looked like a genuine photo. Yeah. It wasn't coached. You can tell. And it's like, she didn't say so I can protect me from her. It's so I can protect her. Yeah. And it's like, dude, gro like for me, when people were asking, when I was working in the NICU, they're like, What's, what are some of the things that you enjoy about it? It's like just the pure sound of, of crying for one. But then mm -hmm. when, you, when you actually work with like, you know, toddlers, kids or pediatric patients and their laughs, 
it's one of the most purest sound you can yeah. ever hear. It's mm-hmm. contagious, you know? man. It is. <laughs> it is. But it's just certain certain things that we can learn from children. One because you know they have such a an, an innocent mind, you know, and whatnot, and they don't they're not throwing they're not analyzing certain things and and putting you know their own projections into certain mm-hmm. things. They just know that they're they're either doing what they're told for one. Um, but it's a different understanding, you know. Again, she was like, "What well, to protect her, not to protect me?" Yeah. kind of thing. We're over here like. Fuck, I ain't wearing a mask. It's my right, you know, kind of shit. And I was like, man, I can get into a whole conversation about that, but I'm not going to because we're not going to take away from Man, for me, it's a little different. So I, I'm catching the news the other day, and there's a protest outside of Fort Worth ISD. A bunch of parents, and they got their kids out there with, sign, with signs, open the schools back up. And then I hear a mother, I don't know who she is, I hope, I hope you catch wind of this video. And she's like, the school system, the, the school district needs to open the schools back up, and they need to provide the students with proper PPE. First of all, the schools can't even provide su- supplies for all the students. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're calling on the parents to bring in extra supplies to help take care of it. The teachers themselves, who are on a low-budget salary, are called to supply their entire classroom with, with where, where whether it be chairs, construction paper, markers, and everything else. Now you're calling for the school district who can't even properly supply the school and the teachers with the supplies that they need to be successful to provide PPE for over 40,000 students in the ISD system. Do you hear yourself? You don't want your taxes to go up, so where's this money coming from? So you want teachers that are on the front line. We we shit on our teachers. We shit on our educators. We underpay them. They're mm-hmm. severely underpaid. We see how much time they spend with our kids because we just got to spend all that time with our kids over the past four months. We're telling them, your safety does not matter. You, We want to send our kids to you. We don't care that you have a family at home, that you may have a wife or a husband, or if you're a single teacher, you may they may take care of their mother or their father or have a significant other that they're just dating. We're saying, screw that. We don't care. Get these kids PPE and get these kids out of our health, houses and back to school. And it, it pissed me off. It pissed me off. How are you just? How are you going to do that? Do you not? Do you not see this? We have school. We have schools in the same district. You, you can see it in DISD. You can see it in the Fort Worth ISD. You have the lower end elementary schools. You have the higher end elementary schools. You have the lower end high schools. You have the higher end high schools that are all in the same district. Mm-hmm. So how? I I, it, it, I I was frustrated for the educators. Yeah. The, our public our public educators that speak out that voice their opinions and it seems like no just everyone's just like oh okay. You're seeing how essential teachers are. Yeah. Pay them. School districts, it ra- okay, raise the property taxes if we have to raise property taxes mm-hmm. to get PPE in the schools. It's like this is, if you want that to happen, cool, this is what has to happen as a result of that. You're not just going to pop that up out of thin air. Yeah. Now, I feel like it's so unfair of us to ask so much of our educators. Educators who themselves have worries as well. Yeah. And, have and children as well. And people have realized, you know, how important teachers are now that, since we're on the topic of mental health, it's like, Children are staying home. They're meant to be out, mm-hmm. you know, interact with each other. But parents that are staying home, you know, and can't work because they're taking care of the kids or doing homeschooling. And that's mm-hmm. not the role yeah. that they're comfortable with, yeah. you know. Um, and it's like you, you, getting a chance to speak with parents or even, you know, um, with the post yesterday. But for those that are feeling mentally drained, like what's going on? And it's like they're worried, they're worried about the school. Um, how am I going to teach my kids at home virtually when their classes are like half an hour subject matters each and whatnot, you know, and I get it. But to go back to the whole mask thing, you know, it's like people are going to be like, well, y'all aren't wearing masks for the whole podcast. Well, one is an agreement between us three. Mm-hmm. One, we know the two, yeah. two, it's going to be kind of hard to talk while you have a mask on. But besides that point is that whether you decide to choose to wear a mask or not is your right. But just because you choose one way or the other, this doesn't necessarily mean you have to go against the other person's beliefs or what they want to practice. Wear a mask if you want to. Don't wear a mask if you don't want to. But stop attacking each other for making a decision one way or the other. Like, Man, respect that. That goes you know? in with anything. Wearing a mask, right. voting, uh, religion, uh, whether you're a vegan or not a vegan. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, why do we have to be one way or the other? And right. it's just like, it's no right or Agreed wrong. You know, I see people that are like, oh, well, you're wearing a mask because you're a fucking sheep. And then the ones that are are wearing a mask or over here hating on those that don't. And it's like, all right, man, you go your way. You, you go your way. You do your thing. You do your thing. And like it's just really be respectful. Energy, you know? it is, it's like, I, don't, I don't know how much energy it, it takes to, to actually practice acceptance. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, let me operate in my world. You operate in your world. You do as you see fit. I do yeah. as I see fit. Like, you, you doing that does not affect me if I'm doing what I need to do 
in order for myself to feel safe. Right. And I get businesses do what they have to in order to follow regulations that are placed in forth. Yeah. For certain reasons. Mm -hmm. And so I know like businesses that are, are out here getting heat and, you know, employees are getting attacked because they're enforcing a rule mm -hmm. that they were told to enforce by their upper leadership or upper management. And it's like, why? If you want to go into the establishment, it's no different than them saying no shirt, no shoes, right. no service. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, you have a right to wear a mask or not, but they also have a right to refuse service if mm -hmm. they don't deem like you are following their protocols. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like. I guess common sense isn't common. It, it, people but don't think hey, about you know, it's they're just asking you to put a mask on to walk through the store for twenty minutes. You're not spending hours in that particular store, and then take your mask off afterwards if you want to. Just do what you need to in order to follow the business regulations yeah. that they are doing in order for them to stay open mm -hmm. for you. Right. People don't take other people into consideration, man. Like the we're just it's in not, a selfish world, right? And it's like they don't think about there may be an older person that's in the store. And they may be standing in line right behind you. You don't got a mask on. They're at risk of dying if they get right. you know, COVID. You know, kids, whatever. It don't matter. It's like people don't think about other people. They just think about themselves. And if you, you, know you really I mean? have an issue with f stores reinforcing their mask rule, fucking order it online. Order online. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> send it back. Try it on. Send it. People don't want to send it back. Yeah. That's right. why. Amazon. Hey, I want to try this shit on once. I want it to fit. I don't want to go through the hassle of going back to the post office. Yeah. What the hell is going no, on with the post office? Mask. Is it like oh, I saw all that shit right. like shutting down, shutting down, or they're they're trying Putting to shut locks, down the votes, locks on the mailboxes and stuff. For what? What is I? I'm just catching snippets of stuff. I'm about to say, I, this there's too much shit going on. I'm like, what the fuck going on? There's too much shit going on. Politics, bro. Something about mail-in votes. Trump wow. said, "If you can protest, you can go vote." <laughs> 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 I laughed. <laughs> he said, "It is what it is, too." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> When's the last time a president said, "It is it what it is"? is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I messed with it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it got me. It, it, you know, thinking. You know, touching back, calling back on on voting. Uh, <laughs> I was. I I'm just in my truck driving, and I'm like, "Is is the devil we know better than the devil we don't?" Ooh. Like. <laughs> Ooh. Is, is it like, do we really want to try these new people or do we just ride him out? Cause we know, Hey, we know what to expect. We, we That's know true. what the hell is yeah. going on. Like we get these new people in here. What, what's going to happen? We don't know what is, this we don't, new devil we don't is. know what the hell is going to happen. Damn. That's a, the, that's huh? a, so, hey, am I, is, yeah. people gonna be like, he's a Trump supporter. <laughs> hey, whatever, <laughs> call me what you want. It, the, it, you know, it goes back to the Italian job when uh, Charlie Staring was like, I trust everybody, I don't trust the devil in him. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah. That's did you, a did you make that up? No, let me go ahead and give credit to um, the movie, um, was it Warrior? That UFC fight where the brothers fight each other oh, in the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember, he's with his dad about to train, and his dad's like, the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. <laughs> 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 he like talks like that. So when he, when he said that in that movie the first time I heard it, I was like, damn, like, that's heavy. That's heavy right there. So some so to allude to some of the questions or the responses that we got to the uh, the question of what's been mentally draining you, um, politics, mm -hmm. work uh, related issues, relationships, relationships. School. How do you how do you how do you handle how handle how do you handle like when you're stressed out or when you're stressed out? What do y'all usually do or when do you feel like you're mentally drained? I, or are I you throw. aware of it? I'm very aware of it. I throw weights everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like I will work out for five hours if I have to. Mm -hmm. Does it help? It does. It does. See, how is weight weightlifting? I, I'm sorry. Continue along, then I'll ask my question to you. I'm just saying that's just my that's my therapy. How I've heard people say that weightlifting is a therapy to them, and I lift and I don't feel any stress release. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. It, for one, I feel like you know working out is a stressor in itself to the body. And I'm like, I, I, my, like my mom was talking to me and she was asking me because I, I was sharing some stuff with her and she's like, well, you know, working out, go work out and de-stress yourself. I'm like, mom, working out has never been a stress reliever for me. I, and I don't even know if I have a stress reliever. And if we're, you know, being completely honest, when I get to those points, my mind just shuts down Yeah. and I don't want to do anything. I've, I've been there several times in periods in my life to where I've gotten bogged down and I don't know which way is right. And I'm just like, damn, like when I had to make the decision to uh, move to Dallas. So moving five hours away, 
moving away from my son, um, I was house sitting for um, a couple of previous friends um, while they were out of town. And it was just me at the house with their two dogs. And I noticed that when I'm by myself, my mind takes off to somewhere else. And it's, I don't know if it's a bunch of suppressed thoughts from things that have happened, but they start to, they, they come up. Yeah. And when I'm alone, I, I feel all of it. When I'm with people is when I'm at my, at my best. Right. And that, that scares me because mm -hmm. eventually there will be a time where I have to be by myself. Now, it doesn't scare me to the point of doing anything harmful to myself, um, but I had an episode recently where I had some where, where people were out of town and I was by myself, silence in the house. And I'm just like, what? You know, you, you start to your my mind started to go there. Yeah. It's and, in your thoughts. right? Yeah. In my in my thoughts. And I, I, I'm like, hey, Joe, like, hey, this is what's happening. You got to be aware of it and you got to fight and push through it. So for the people that that are like me, that share that sentiment of when they get alone or they feel like they don't have a stress reliever, um, like I, I sympathize, I sympathize with that. I really do. Um, and I just want to put it out there. If you feel like you need somebody to talk to, you want to get together and do anything like that, please message me because I've been in some spots to where it's just like, damn, how do, how do I, how do I deal with this mental stress? Um, in, in finding an outlet. Yeah. The, um, one other thing I had a coach in high school, coach Jones, Eric Jones, cop hell high. He was our strength and conditioning coach. He always said, this is another thing. He always said, I don't, I, I attribute this quote to him. He said, um, tough times don't last, tough people do. Mm. Time, tough times do not last, tough people do. So that's always something that I've shared and, and reverberated with myself. And always another thing is that the sun always comes up in the morning. Mm -hmm. It'll always come up in the morning. There's a ray of sunshine coming through to kind of to kind of help out and, yeah. and cope with, you know, when you go into mental places like that. But see, that's the thing. I feel like it's easier said once you have experienced it mm -hmm. and have gotten past it. You know, and it's easy for us. It's I don't want to say it's easy. It's easier. It's easier for us to sit here and say, "Hey, if you're going, if you're going through some stuff, reach out to us and whatnot." And you'd hope that they do, but I think it's harder for them. Which relates to a question I was asked yesterday. Actually, do you feel like it's harder to ask for help, or do you feel like it's harder to say no? Right. In my opinion, I mean, depending on the circumstances, but in my opinion, overall, I feel like it's harder to ask for help it is. than it is for someone to say no. Mm -hmm. Right. So we can sit here and be like for anyone that's going through issues or mental issues or feeling depressed or feeling alone to reach out to any one of us. And our doors are opened, mm -hmm. but you can only help so much mm -hmm. and you still need them to take that extra step to actually reach out mm -hmm. and do it. Leading the horse to water. Right. Careful. So yeah, whether yeah. you're reaching out to either, you know, Joe Griff or myself or find a particular person, just one person, and even if you haven't spoken to them for so long, it doesn't necessarily mean they're not thinking about you. That's mm -hmm. the thing about friends. Mm -hmm. Reach out to them anyways yeah. and see what happens. And for any individual that has this particular mindset, it's like this person only reaches out to me when they need something, be careful with that thought process because, it, it, again, it's all situational and circumstances. Mm -hmm. Maybe they only reach out to you at that particular moment because you're all they know yeah. for that particular issue they're going through. So whether you hear from them only when they need you, you may be their light yeah, for right. all you know. You may be their lifeline. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, it's, it's, it's circumstantial. It's, it, you know, it's circumstances and whatnot. If they're reaching out to you for money all the time, well, that's a whole different issue. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. But we're not talking about that. Mental. We're talking about mental issues and depression. And, and again, it's, it's one is to recognize it, but then two is like, what am I going to do at this point? And I agree with you is, is always the hardest when you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. Mind goes crazy and runs at a thousand miles an hour at night before bed. That's when demons come out to play. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's when you're around people is when you feel one, because your, your mind is not on it Two, Now you're surrounded by individuals that you feel comfortable with safe with whatever. If you think about it, we're genetically coded for human interaction. Mm -hmm. Whether you're, and for those that claim to be introverts, it's a personality trait as far as that goes, but an introvert is only an introvert typically when they're around people they're not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the moment they're right. around their circle, mm -hmm. yeah. they open up. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait, are you really an introvert right. kind of thing? Yeah. You know? And so 
And then, like I said, we can, the conversation can go either way. It's find that one person. I, I want to lean on that. If you are that one person that everybody comes and you are that strong friend, who does the strong friend go to? Great question. That's, who do they go the to? Because they need help, too. It's a circle. It's yeah. a circle. I've been saying it all week. Make sure your circle is tight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because even if you're, the, if you're the, the alpha, whatever, if you're the top, the one that everybody comes to, you still need somebody to lean on. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So Can't pour from an empty cup, right? right. No. You, you got to lean on somebody else, and they may lean on somebody that leans on somebody that leans on somebody that mm-hmm. leans on you. It's a yeah. circle. You know right. what I mean? So you just, it's continual energy. You know what I mean? You you have to, you can't, you can't take on the world and not expect to crumble. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? You got to have somebody leaning, you know, pushing you up or holding mm-hmm. you up. So you have to just, you have to practice what you preach and find somebody else to lean on. The yeah. weight of the world you know is heavy. I mean? It's very heavy. And it's not meant to be carried alone. Right. Yeah. So, and I feel like a lot of those, you know, we're talking about leaning on people on mental health. I feel like uh, I don't know the exact definition of mental health, but we've had we had some people chime in as far as protecting themselves from negativity yeah. that other people bring to them. Now, how do we differentiate between what a person is bringing me negative? I guess it's just subject matter what they're talking to me about. Like if it's nonsense, right? What? How do you how do you address somebody so you're not offending them, to letting them know like, hey. Because you're allowed to protect your mental health when somebody else is spilling to you and be like, hey, I can't handle this right now. Like, I had a friend ask me, she texted me the other day, a friend from college, her name's Allie. Um, she asked me, she said, hey, can I, can I talk to you right now? Can I be honest with you? And I texted her back, I said, hey, I can't handle that right now. Like, let's just hold off on it. Right. And she's like, that's why I asked you if I could ask yeah. you this right now. And I think that is brilliant. Ask for permission before mm-hmm. you go and right. spill your guts out to somebody about something that's bogging you down. Because like you said, you may not, you that person may appear to be in the mindset to be able to shoulder that. Right. But in reality, they're not going to show it that yeah. they're not able to shoulder yeah. that right mm-hmm. now. And then it's okay as a person who is strong to be like, hey, I can't handle that right now. It's no disrespect to you. I love you. You're my friend. I really care about you, but I personally cannot handle that right right now. Now, if you're on the other end of that, where do you take your problem to? Do you seek professional help? Do you, do you find someone else to to turn to? What do you do with that? So I honest, so I have multiple mentors, right? So this has happened before. I, I need to talk to you. Is it cool if I talk to you about this issue? Hey Griff, you know what? I'm going to be honest with you right now, what I'm going through, it wouldn't be a good idea for us to talk about that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Maybe you should go to so-and-so. Yeah. Bet. Appreciate that. But see, that's a level of respect. Right. And that's right. something that, you know, you would hope, or for anyone that's, you know, for those that are watching and or listening, it's like having the respect of each other, uh, understanding that, yeah, you have issues, but they have issues that they're going to, mm-hmm. going through as well. And it's like, hey, I, I, I really need someone to talk to you right now. Do you have the mental capacity? Mm-hmm. And if you don't at the moment, just understand that I, I do need someone to talk to. So when, you're, when you feel like you're available, can we have that conversation? Right. Right. You know, and, and that's why I say it's so hard because, you know, you, you open the door for those uh, you want or hope to reach out to you. But that now you're like, but when you do, please check with me first kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. It's rough. It is, man. It can. But it's you, rough. Yeah. You gotta, like you said, you gotta protect yourself too. Right. You know what I mean? You, you it's like you want to give it all. You want to give yeah. everything you have. You want to give the clothes off your back to everybody you know and love and this and that. But if you butt naked because you didn't gave everybody your clothes, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you shit out of luck. Kind of screwed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean, so you have to have. You have to have something. <laughs> you got to have a buffer zone every now got and then. To, yeah. You got to. You, you got to build. To. You got to have a trench sometimes. Let right. some shit through. Yeah. Pull the draw gates up and be like, hey, <laughs> yeah. no, we're not passing past here right now. Yeah. And, and go from there. And that's why, I mean, like I said, I work out. Um, I did I talk to y'all about kite flying? Like no. I, I fly kites, bro. It's like, awesome. Like at the park on the. Yeah, oh, the, for real. The freaking oh, cool. Parafoil kites. Big old 6'5 Griff just, outside right, right? Too, with I the kite. Down, down, like, like, dude. One time I was like, yo, find a hobby. Like I fly kites, and they were like, what? Find so, a, yeah. Like, yeah, if you ever see a big black dude at Cole Park <laughs> flying a kite, that's probably me. I'll say hi and I'll show you how to fly the like kite. A, like yeah. a stunt kite? Yeah, like like doing All the tricks, ones that and do tricks and shit. Yeah. They have oh, tournaments. Damn. Right. Yeah. So it's what? like yeah. you get to do something that it's like I get to do something that I've never done before. Mm-hmm. I taught myself how to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I did the research, learned how to do the tricks and all that stuff and got yeah. better at it. So now when I'm in that zone, that negative place, it's like go fly the kite. Do something positive, yeah. right? Do something that you can control. You know what I mean? Do Ooh, something I like that, that 
that you can yeah that you got the range on because like, there's a lot know, of things I'm making all this other stuff go wrong I'm fucking this up fucking this up fucking that up whatever I got this yeah right you feel the wind you with the nature you know nature's doing whatever the wind is kissing your face as you're <laughs> making all these tricks happen you know what I mean Thanks it's for like painting you, that picture Griff. you just disappear and go away you know what I mean? Kids walk, oh, that's really cool. And then yeah. you, you get to teach somebody right. something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you had all this bad shit going on. Mm-hmm. You take a moment away, you know what I mean? And you go be free. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you may influence somebody else doing something. And I'm glad you said that Trying because that reminds, me, that reminds me of, a, of an interview that I did with an NBA player. Um, and they were asking him about the game and how he feels the year has been going and and. It, his quote along the line of saying, you know, every year is promised to have his ups and downs mm. or highs and lows. And that's life. Right. And he said that all you can do is continue to move forward. Um, and how you respond to it will determine the type of year that you're going mm. to have, um, or the type of life that you're going to have, understanding that those highs don't always last and those lows don't always last either. Um, it just comes down to responding. And like you said, you know, doing something that you can control, Mm-hmm. But understanding that you got to be able to sit back and think about it first is like, well, can I control this or can I not? Yeah. You know, it goes back to the quote that says, um, can you control this? And if not, then why are you stressing about it? Mm-hmm. Can you control it? If yes, then why are you stressing about it? Yeah. You know? The crazy thing about kites, I'm, I'm still on the kite. I love kites. <laughs> so the crazy thing is somebody was like, well, what if the wind's not blowing? I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, on, Take that on energy top of flying somewhere. kites. <laughs> I throw. I learned how to throw boomerangs. Oh, like people think, you just oh. throw it and it comes back. No, it's there's there's a science. Well, it's an art technique to it. To it yeah. Right? yeah, and also drones. Right. If there's no wind, fuck it. I'll make my own wind. Yeah. You know what I mean. You just you just find a way to be free. I'll go remote control. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean. So it's like you. There's so many things. Yeah. Basket weaving. If you want to get into that, get into it. Mm-hmm. If you want to learn how to sew, go learn how to fucking sew. Make Calligraphy. Oh, right? yeah. Hey, writing is a lost art, like mm-hmm. we talked about. It's beautiful. It man. is. Like, you're sitting there creating these beautiful lines with your, with your, the pen. It's the sexiest shit in the world. It is. Right. It is. You know what I mean? I, I mean, think it is. Um, Anyone that has beautiful handwriting. Right. Damn. It's like you, calligraphy, boy. If you, fellas, <laughs> if you can, if you got that, that skill. Penmanship. Little razzle dazzle on the yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Woman, see that like, flick oh of the God, wrist. You got beautiful <laughs> handwriting, you know. Like, chicks what is what is that? Like what is that pen with a feather called? A, is it a quill? No. Were you dipping in the ink? Dipping yeah, yeah. The there's ink? a te- uh, there's a term there's for a that term type for of pen. Those things are expensive too. Um, God dang it! I see it hanging on the dang. Makes me just want to go pick up a feather I find on the ground and just tape it to a regular pen. No. <laughs> That's pretty much what they used to do. They would get a feather and just dip it and start writing. Yeah, but I don't know. It's really. That's insane. I feel like it's called it a quill, though. I think it's called a quill, right? I, see, this is why we need a fact. We need a uh, we what need is person, guy? whatever they're called. We'll get somebody in here fact to do checker. that. Get us going. Yeah. Gents, how y'all feeling, though? After that, CDC did report mental health is at an all-time <laughs> low. <laughs> CDC reported mental health around the nation is on it a is. decline. It is. The, around the you world. Know you know what that tells me too though that somebody somewhere is bound to just snap snap yeah just snap that's a scary thought that like is to, a scary thought especially because school shootings have gone down because schools were closed and now schools are opening up schools and are opening up um they're talking about opening movie theaters back up yep you know malls and things like that and you don't know who someone who's already off the kilt that they've been locked away by themselves yeah what they're what they're thinking or you know and it would be a horrible time for something like that and, mm-hmm. and Putting it out to the universe that nothing like that happens. Right. So, but that that reminds me of a conversation I had with one of our F forty five members yesterday. We're talking about death, and I asked her, I was like, "Are you scared to die?" I, I, yeah, I straight, I asked her, I was like, "Are you scared? Are you scared to die? Or are you scared of death?" And at first, she said, "Yeah," and I was like, "Well, what is it about death that scares you?" And she's like, "The act of dying alone, depending on how you die, yeah, doesn't necessarily scare her. It's." The people that she leaves behind, mm-hmm. how would they, how would they take it? How yeah. would they handle it? How would they mourn what's going to happen? The people that rely on her mm-hmm. um, and whatnot, like children and mm-hmm. stuff. So I get it. Yeah. Is it the fear of death or is it the fear of not knowing how you'll die? 
Like if it's going to be painful or if it's going to be excruciating agony. Oh, look at me. I'm just taking it deep down there. <laughs> like, because I've thought about it like, damn, I hope I get like in my sleep. Can I be I afforded that? Like, you yeah. know, something like that. I don't want to like. I don't want to suffer. That no, reminds me of the song um, Pop Star. The lyrics is like, what is it? I want a quick death. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, and that brings me to another subject. Um, rest in peace to a family out in uh, Colorado. I'm not sure if it was in Denver. They were in a suburb. It was a Muslim family. Um, they immigrated here to the United States. Um, three masked assailants burnt their house down with their five-year-old and their two-year-old oh on the my inside. Oh, gosh. Um, my heart saw that, and I was just like, and, and to me, that's a targeted attack because there's two houses right yeah. in between that house. Of course. And they, they died. Hate crime. And, yeah, they died in the fire. Um I hate to hate to be so dark towards the end of an episode, but I see things like that, and you know, I just. But that's the world we live like, in, folks, and it's one of those things where if you're again going back to the being the, the individual that's a light, if you have that opportunity or you have the mental capacity to be that light, mm -hmm. be the fucking light. Mm -hmm. Like we have so much evil out in this world. There's some sick ass people around this world. It can be, they could be right outside these doors. You know, you see drive-bys or whatnot. I had a patient that was shot three times because of a drive-by. No, no relations to whatever. Anyways, mm. that, it's like that. I still have hope in humanity. I see. I we we hear about all the bad stuff that's going on, but I have seen. I still see good things. The good right. always the bad. I mean, I see in you too. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like if you if you can't be the light, be the light. Right. We need more of it. Right. And don't shy away from it. Who gives a fuck if there's if someone's clowning on you or talking bad about you? It's like, man, all you do is put out positive stuff. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna keep putting out positive stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't need your energy, negative energy. And if you want to talk about your negative energy, come at me. Bring we'll it. talk about oh, it. Oh shit. No. <laughs> the way I see it though, <laughs> oh, good, the, the good outweighs the bad. The bad is just magnified. Magnify it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's like, why do you want to carry that around? It's a burden. It's stressful. Like, yeah, why? why like, it takes I don't, less I don't get to, it. it. You know? It takes less it, energy to frown or, or no it takes more energy to frown than smile or something yeah yeah more muscles yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i mean it's like i mean do you I ever get sit it. there and try to do that though like try to frown I your face every, like, time, <laughs> every time i hear it i'm like face strong as fuck <laughs> <laughs> strong face ass <laughs> <laughs> look like sour face oh, baby oh. yeah <laughs> but it's one of those things where even that being said i get it you got to go through certain things to appreciate the other there's no good without evil there's no evil without good just like joker needs batman just as much as batman needs joker hey. but either way Figure out what it is. Cause I know hurt people hurt people, yeah. mm -hmm. but you can't continue down that path. And it's like, it gets at what point are you not tired of that bullshit? Right. Like people don't change until they're tired of their own bullshit. Well, take a look at yourself in the mirror. Like actually take a look at yourself in the mirror. Cause I highly doubt people actually look at themselves in the mirror for, for what it is other than to put their face on or brush your teeth or whatever. Take a look. And if you don't like what you see, well, do something about it because that is something that you can't control. Wash your ass and brush your teeth. Wash your ass and brush your teeth. Wash your and ass. And I wasn't going to bring this teeth. up, but we, since we were on, um, so I have a friend of mine. She was, uh, fuck man, she was drugged and sexually assaulted. Right. She knows who the person is. Um. I'm 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 with you. I got your back. All right. Um, the, to to the motherfucker that 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 went, you should be eradicated off the earth. That's 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 all I'm gonna say about that. But I love you. I'm with you. Whatever you need, let me know. We all, right. all we all stand that's, behind you. We all stand behind you. You do. Like you said, it's fucked up people in the world. Yes, yeah. hey, mental health is not a joke, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it. Protect it, yourself. It is, and mm -hmm. it's it's a heavy topic. Mm -hmm. Certain thing, he, the the topics itself is heavy. That's why it's mentally draining. No, we did all that talking about it. How can someone fortify their mental health? How can you fortify your mental? What what are, what steps do you take to be able to do that? Do you do you read books about mental health? Do you, what do you what do you think you can be done to help solidify what you got going on up here? You have recognition. Mm -hmm. You have to do something about it. You have to talk. I to think people. you have to apply the knowledge that you gain, even if you do the research, whether it's through life experience, whether it's working with someone else that's gone through a particular subject matter. 
because information is just information until you apply it. Right. 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 Um, knowledge without application is just that. It's just info. So to fortify, I think, is to go through it. That's why you said strong people last. or mm. Tough times what, don't. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. tough people last. That's what every coach said. Um, I mean, it's hard. Yeah. We can sit here and talk about it. It's, easy, it's way easier said than done. Right. You get it. Like, we've been through some shit. Um, and I've had... The, and, and I know we, we're running out of time and we'll wrap it up and we'll talk and we can even do another episode for those that want to and for us to dive in further with mental health or, or how to answer your question. Um, so for those that have feedback or have issues they want to talk about, you know, you'll stay anonymous and that's fine. Um, but let us know. It's, this is a heavy subject. Yeah. It's a heavy topic. Yeah. And there's a lot of shit going on this year and the year's not even over. Um, and a lot of it can be done with politics that has, but it's not just always politics. There's other shit that's going on and it's, it helps to communicate. It helps to talk. Like I feel better, you know, and I know that life is still waiting for us outside these doors right. and I get it, but this is how you recharge mm-hmm. and you go out and you continue to attack it, uh, tackle it. Right. Griff, you got any closing statements you want to make? Check your circle. Check your circle. Check your fucking circle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's episode spot. Episode, yeah, episode <laughs> spot. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's episode five of Speak the Fuck Up. We thank you for tuning in with us over here on YouTube. Hey, it's episode five. Now we're about to switch over to dropping this on oh, Spotify, man. Apple, officially going to be on the podcast so you can listen to us while you're traveling in the car in the morning. Uh, we appreciate out. you. Yeah, we appreciate you guys tuning in. We'll have our names down here somewhere. I'm just going to go ahead and point wherever wherever our, our video guy will put them for us, wherever Andrew will put them for us. We appreciate you guys. Be oh, like Andrew. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Major yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Pass. Yeah. Real quick. Hey, for those that know Andrew, don't know Andrew, our camera guy, he, uh, I mean, this is his news to give, but I'm too excited. Yeah, shout it out. out. Yeah. Hey, come hey, on. Congratulations. He is now a registered nurse. There we go. It's official. He has his license. Way to go, Andrew. We look forward to having you back next week. Enjoy your time. Doing great big things. Yeah, hey. happy. No, for Operating real. in his purpose. Yes. Operating in hey. his purpose. Yes, indeed. The universe is going to conspire with you as long as you know what you want to do. Yep. Follow that passion, ladies and gentlemen. Make it your purpose and make it your profession. With that being said, my name is Peter. Be brave with your life, folks. We're out.